everyone, and welcome to the channel. Today, I want to talk about sharing logic sessions and hopefully shed some light on that topic. Sharing logic pro sessions is inevitable. Eventually, you're going to come across it and you're going to need to get your logic session over to someone else, whether it be for collaboration or doing something fun and creative or just showing your friends what you came up with, you're going to need to figure it out. So this video is going to talk through all the weird little odds and ends that you need to consider when sharing sessions between two logic users or sharing to a non-logic user even. So if that is interesting to you, maybe not even interesting, it's not an interesting topic, but if that is important to you and something you need to learn, then definitely check out this video. I'm Wilson Woodyard, a music composer and mixing engineer, and my channel is all about music production and Logic Pro and gear and all of that stuff. So please make sure you like and subscribe if that's interesting to you, and I'm gonna get started. If you've ever attempted to do this and done it incorrectly, then Logic is gonna complain somewhere along the way. It could be you know, missing audio files, it could be like different Logic versions. There's a ton of ways you can mess this up. Some of them are not detrimental, but hopefully this video will help you just iron all of that out and have smooth sessions going back and forth. So for the sake of this video, I have a session here. We just need something to work off of. So let me get it pulled up. So I've got a session pulled up here. It's nothing crazy and I'm not gonna make you listen to it. It's just for referencing. So it's got, you know, some logic stock stuff. It has some third party stuff. So it'll be a good balance of like how to just deal with all of this. So the very first thing you should consider, and this is by far the most important, if you take nothing else from the video, hear me now, you want to save this as a folder. So if you're not familiar with this at all, go up to file, save as. So down here, we're going to pay attention right here where it says organize my project as a, and you can either choose package or folder. So a package is great on paper because it's all in one thing and supposedly that's everything you need. Like all of your MIDI information, all of your audio files, the session is all in that package. But in the past, and I haven't tried this in a long time, but if you move that or move some other folders, Logic cannot find the audio files and then you're in, in, in a, some hot water. Um, you, it's an issue, right? Because you need your audio files in Logic. I've been doing a folder for years, saving as a folder, and that's been way better. So what a folder does is when you save it, it actually creates a root folder and then all of these subfolders with everything else in it that you need. So all of the raw audio files like takes and everything go in there. All of your bounces, uh, you know, anytime you export, they all land in there so you can have your different versions. Any freeze files, if you freeze your project, those are separate files. They go in there. Then your session file also moves over. That's it right there. And then I also use this spot to put any other imports or anything else related to the project. So right here, I have like the original files that my friend sent me to do this with. Um, they all live in there. And then that way, if you move the root folder, everything moves with it. And it's not a situation where like you've moved the audio files folder and Logic can't find it. So all that to say, just save it as a folder. It just makes things easier. Like I said, I haven't saved as a package in a long time because I had a bad experience with it and I'm just like, whatever, I'm gonna stick to folder. But if you hear nothing else, like I said, just save it as a folder. Um, so once you do this, I'll do it again just for, for sake of learning. So I'll save it as a new one on the desktop and we'll just call it Wranglin' Lizards YouTube, right? So I'm saving it on the desktop. There's not currently a folder for that. And so it will create a new one. And then if we go to our desktop now, right here, it created a new subfolder with everything. Um, it copied all the files over. It's just ready to go. And so if you're going to share, start with that and then zip this whole thing. Just go ahead and compress it. So if you're not familiar with zipping or compressing files, you're just taking all of that into a nice little compact thing that's slightly smaller and easier to share and upload and everything. Then you're not having to worry about uploading a bunch of different stuff. You just have this package, <laughs> package. You just have this zip file that contains everything you need and you're done. So then you get a zip and you're good to go. So that is like the baseline level, how you zip it up and deliver that. And then you can put that in Google Drive or Dropbox or we transfer whatever whatever your uh, sharing platform of choice is there. Or you could email it if it's small enough, but it probably is not small enough. So then from there, if you're going to give this to someone, you need to figure out what they have. So number one, do they have Logic? Do they have your third-party plugins? You know, do they have Wave stuff for mixing? Like what is going to be on the computer that you're delivering this to? And I have a few different options for you depending on what they have. 
So, you know, use the chapter marker, skip around for your situation, or just watch the whole thing so you know all the methods. So the best case scenario, you know, you call up your friend, he has all the third-party plugins you have. So just open up your mixer, you know, hop on the phone or type up an email to whoever you're sending it to and say, hey, I have Addictive, I have, you know, SSL Compressor, I have, what else is in here? I'm using Waves LA-2A, Helix Native, um, True Verb, CLA Mixdown, Ozone 10, and Keyscape. And so that's all the third-party stuff that I have, and then everything else is stock logic. So then if by some stroke of luck they have all the same things, you're good. Just send it. You can zip it as is, send it to them. They'll be able to open it up, no problem. This would also be a good time to confirm what Logic version your collaborator is using. So if you go up here to Logic, About Logic Pro, so you can open this up and see right here we're version 11.1.1. So if they're using an older version, you might need to take that into consideration as well and maybe don't use like Chroma Glow or, you know, one of those new things. But again, that's, you just got to confirm with them what they have. So option or situation two is that your collaborator has Logic, but they don't have all of the third-party plugins that you have. Now is when you need to start getting into some session prep before you send it. So what you need to do to make this happen is bounce tracks in place. And now you can either do all the tracks in your session or just certain tracks depending on what to do. But for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and bounce everything in place. So what we're going to do is come over here. Basically, any track that's not a track stack, we want to highlight. So, whoops, 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 that. And I'm holding a command, click and drag. So we'll get all those, we'll get bass, we'll get these acoustics, this banjo, electrics, and keys. And then we'll leave the reverbs and stuff how they are for now. So this would be, you know, anything that you're highlighting is something they do not have, and you're going to want to bounce that in place. So we're going to go here, file, bounce. So you're going to want to bounce tracks in place. Regions in place is a different thing. That's for like converting MIDI. Don't Tracks in place for now. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. And you're going to click that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and just hit OK. So it'll take a second. It's got to think through all that. That has finished now and you'll notice there's way more than there was before. So before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and save this as... And just... It doesn't matter what you name it, so I'll just do a BIP for bounce in place. This way you're not interfering with whatever you set up previously. I just, because it gets really messy, I just like to do a fresh save as, and then that's the one they should use. So now all the mess is on this underscore bounce in place BIP track. So if we hit play now, it should sound similar. Let me just check. So it's exactly how it was, but you'll notice all of these new tracks have no processing on them. So what this has done is taken all of our plugins, all of our instrument tracks, MIDI instruments, um, sound sources, whatever, and printed everything together so that we're just dealing with clean tracks with audio files on them. And then if you wanted to, you could come in here and get rid of everything extra. So just go to all these, you know, that are grayed out. And we'll delete all of those. And now we're kind of back to regular session. And if you go to your mixer window now, there's a lot less in there to deal with. If you go over to your mixer now, you'll see that a lot of those plugins and processing are gone now, and that's because they've been baked into the track. And that could be helpful, again, for collaborating, just so all of that is gone and your collaborator doesn't have to worry about it, and they don't have to worry about the compatibility issues and that kind of thing. And then you'll still see we have SSL compressor on all of our track stacks. And so this is kind of a user's choice here. You can either bypass them, not worry about your bus processing, or if you want that included, you have to bounce down the individual bus, basically. So to do that, you know, you just highlight a bus. So we'll do this percussion bus here, and we'll just need to bounce that in place. Bounce, track in place.
And then now we have two, two sets of things happening. You know, you can mute your percussion here and you have that whole percussion bus as a thing here. And this can get into borderline like stems territory. So that's another way, you know, you can collaborate with people is just sharing stems. This is a lot of, you know, what is going to work for your situation. So. Now is basically everything together, all the processing baked in. That's a great way to deal with that. Another option or situation for you is the person you're collaborating with they either do not have logic or they just want audio files. So instead of sending a full session, you're just going to send audio files. The way you do this, you can highlight any combination of things you want here. So I'm going to highlight everything in my session. And then make sure to move this endpoint. I didn't do that earlier. So once you have everything selected that you want to share, go up here to File, Export, 23 Tracks as Audio Files. Now, there's some careful things to consider here. Uh, file type, whatever you've been working in. Uh, trim silence to file end. You have a bit depth there. Um, trim silence to file end or cycle range only. Trim silence is basically once a track has a quiet point, like quiet to the end of the song, it's just going to cut it there. Uh, cycle range only is going to make them all the same length. And that length is going to be the length of your cycle range up here. So that's the one I like to use is cycle range only. Multi-output software instruments is one file per track, or you can do one file per instrument or one file per channel strip. So I'm going to leave it on track. You can bypass your plugins here if you don't want to include your processing. So say you're sending it off to mix, you're not going to want the plugins. And then if you want to include, you know, uh, pan, volume information and automation, include tempo information, all of this overload protection is good. And then you could set up a custom file name pattern right here. And what this means is how is it going to label everything? So I really like an increment in the beginning. And so I just drug that into the pattern. And now you can see file name example is 01 drum. And then drum is the track name and then custom is whatever else you want. So you can do uh, underscore whatever. Um, and so then that'll basically assemble the files in that manner. So, you know, drum will be one, percussion will be two, studio will be three, you know, on and on and on. So I will go ahead, I'll get rid of my custom. I'll go ahead and do it as that. Export. Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and close this session. We'll save my changes and we are going to go to our folder here. And now you'll notice in our bounces folder are all of these that were generated for us. So you could either leave them in the bounces folder or you can start a new folder called multi-tracks or stems or whatever you want to label that. And then you can move them in there if you'd like. Because bounces, as those technically are bounces, I like to save the bounces folder for like, here's a whole copy of my song so you can hear it. And stems or multi-tracks are more of like, here's the, the building blocks to build the song, right? Let me go in here real quick. I'm going to prep each, each version so that we're all on the same page. I'll bounce tracks in place. So I'm just bouncing this down to audio as well. And then when we zip up the folder, we'll have both a session that's cleaned out to audio that'll be easy for other Logic users to open. And then there will be the folder with all the multi-tracks in it for anyone to load that in any session. And what we're going to do is go ahead and delete all the unused tracks like I did earlier. Okay, and a piano and an organ. Okay, so we're going to delete all of these. And now you'll see for each kind of bus that we had, it, it generated a, uh, a bounce of that whole thing. And so you could just mute these if you wanted, but it'd still be good to give them to whoever you're working with, just so they have the option. And you could relabel these to say bus if you want to. A 
Okay, so we've got all that. Um, so if they want, you know, individual things, they can go here. Or they can go to the bus and have the same. Same thing. And it's a really nice set of tools to collaborate together. Um, and then as far as this reverb, I'm going to go ahead and make a track with control T. And we have verb down here. And we could do the same thing as before and just bounce this track in place. And now if you listen, all of our reverb is soloed up as well. And so you can mute that and just leave that in there as well. Um, that way, whoever is working on it can have their choice. And so once you're all done and you've kind of prepped the session how you want, go ahead and save it. And it'll go ahead and save to our bounce in place version. And we'll close that. So now that we've kind of prepped all those versions, it's time to zip it up again. So, you know, you would come right here, compress this. And now no matter what you deliver, they'll be able to work with it. Um, again, like you don't need to do all of these versions, but this just to show you the different options you have. Um, and then I'll show you one more thing. All of these multi-tracks, if you were to drop them in a session, I'll show you what that looks like. So just highlight them all, drop them in here, create new tracks. And now we have our full session worth of tracks that are all just raw audio. And if you wanted to include that reverb that we just bounced down, you know, you need to export that as its own file. Again, that just depends on, I just ask the person you're delivering the files to, like, what do you want? Um, you'd be surprised how much it helps just to ask someone how they want to receive files. Um, but hopefully that's a nice buffet of information for you. There's so many different ways you can share files with others and collaborate. And there's no like right or wrong way. It's really up to preference. And so my hope is that this video just gives you a lot of options for that. That wraps up my video for collaborating and sharing sessions with other Logic users. If you have any questions about any of this, please be sure to ask in the comments. I try my best to read all those and respond to what I can. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and please make sure you like and subscribe because it really helps the channel to grow. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Bye.